Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. My name is Reverend Michael Schoonover and I invite you to our YouTube channel and our Sunday service this morning. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer and this is from Daily Word. This is April the 11th, 1939. The substance of life and strength operates in my body to maintain health. Just invite you to allow that divine idea, substance, and substance is everything we need, life, understanding, and wisdom. So as we allow that divine idea to really percolate through our subconscious mind, we know that we have the strength to operate our body. We also are here to have a healthy body. So anything that is appearing in your life that does, quote, not seem healthy, we affirm that the substance can manifest and bring through a healthy body temple. Unity Way Church is a metaphysical church, which means we study consciousness, the components of consciousness, which means awareness, which means consciousness, which means subconscious mind, and also superconscious mind, which we call the Christ consciousness. And when that is in sync and we're living from that consciousness, our life shifts and our life changes. And that's really what we teach as metaphysical students of truth. And if you believe that high understanding with me, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Mickey with with our daily word. Good morning. The word for today is grace. The affirmation is the grace of God surrounds and enfolds me. From the moment I greet the day to the moment I rest at night, I am enfolded in the grace of God. I find grace in the rhythm and balance of the natural world. It is in the beauty of a sunrise and a sweet, gentle rain. I find grace in the sweet souls with whom I share this beautiful planet, the faces of my dear ones and others I meet throughout the day. Grace is the presence of God made manifest. As it does for the world around me, grace blesses my life as well. It is the unexpected kindness, the serendipity, the forgiven error. It is the assurance I carry in the deepest recesses of my soul that I am loved, treasured, and secure in the heart of God. And from 1 Timothy 1.14, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. And again, our affirmation is, the grace of God surrounds and enfolds me. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. Grace. It's a word that we could really ponder and take into our meditation time. Actually, the word grace literally in both Greek and Aramaic means joy. So when we have grace, we have the joy of the Lord within us. And that's a divine idea we all could use more of. Right now, I'd like to sync up with Silent Unity. Silent Unity in the Silent Unity Chapel back at Unity Village in Missouri. There is a soul sitting in that chapel holding the high watch, believing in answered prayer. Our prayer claims are there. They're sitting in front or they're in front of them on an altar. I'd like to bless all those prayer claims. I like to bless all the souls that have requested prayer because we know as true students, we deserve what we desire because our God understanding is absolute good. Again, I'd like to take some of that energy that's in that center, in that chapel right there and bring it forth into our sanctuary. And as it floods this sanctuary and goes out over our property, to wherever you may be. May you right now know that you're anchored in grace. You're anchored in your own understanding of grace. And as you hold on to that truth, your life will unfold just like a flower in purpose, in, in a dynamic new way. And that's what we believe as really good true students. If you believe that high understanding with me of that absolute truth, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This morning, I pulled a very interesting comic for you, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's two dogs, and it's a scene in a backyard with a doghouse. And there, there is a satellite off the doghouse, and you can see around the satellite is the dish that the dog eats out of. And the caption says, I got a dish, but it only picks up the food channel. Oh, you know that is so funny. Come on. They're looking for some grub. They're not looking for some food channel. Humor is good for the soul. 
for my minister's joke page. And it is, I'd like to share this. When I was young, I was scared of the dark. Now when I see my monthly electric bills, I'm scared of the light. <laughs> oh, come on, you know that is funny. And one more for us. It is, if you get a home loan at a bank, you'll be paying it back for 30 years. That's usually what loans are. But if you rob the same bank, you'll be out in 10 years. If you wanna follow me for more sound financial advice, check me out. Oh, you know that is so funny. Come on, guys. Laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is good for us when we live in a state of absolute grace. This morning, my talk title is Ask, Seek, and Knock. This is a formula that we can use really to transform our life. Ask, seek, and knock. It's not only a formula for prayer to be answered, but it also is really good metaphysics. And we'll be going into some components of that this morning. I'd like to open up with some wisdom from the great poet. Uh, this is Walt Whitman, and he shares this insight. Re-examine all you have been told. Dismiss what insults your soul. As you can see, Walt Whitman was definitely a, a true student, definitely in the vein of Emerson. And I think he really offers us some powerful truth, self-reflection here. We examine what we've learned, what we've been told, but if, if it's not in alignment with our own souls, we need to ponder. Is this something we need to hold on to? Or something during this Lenten season, we can let it go as we move, move toward, toward our uh, resurrection. I like to say it's most likely uh, anything that we've had in life is taken more than one massive leap. Uh, where we go and how we get there, we work day by day. That's why we have a day, uh, daily prayer practice. It takes a lot of humility, and it also means that we have to make repeated actions. If you really want to be a good athlete, you go to the batting cage. If you really want to be a golf player, you play golf. If you really want to be a good singer, you do singing lessons. Those are how, you, that's the ability to really focus us in the direction. So when we ask and seek and knock, we know exactly the desire of our own souls. And I want to say, I'm going to be very honest with you, that there's no magic carpet that will come and solve all our life problems. So stop looking at the floor. Stop looking at the rug, even if it's shag. I mean, we, our truth will lead us in the direction step by step. But I think many of us want some kind of magic to appear and we're just going to get on this carpet and we're going to go where we go or go where we think we want to go. And that's just not how it works. I will say that we change direction and we take a thousand small steps to get right where we need to go. So this morning in self-reflection, where do you feel you need to go? Ask, seek, and knock. Those are ideas that we can really use. When we ask, that's the desire. What is a desire bubbling up within us? To seek is to, how do we expand that idea? Bring it into really not only just a floating idea, but make it concrete within our mind with images and feelings. And and knocking, it means that we're taking action to achieve what we want. And that's really a formula that can never fail us if we use those three components. This is from the New Testament. This is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. This is uh, chapter 7, uh, verse 7 through 8. And I know you've heard this before, but I invite you to have beginner's ears this morning. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's metaphysical truth. But it's a practice we have to be engaged in. It's a practice that we want to be engaged in because as our desires expand, we become more self-assured. We have the courage to ask and desire and have the experiences and the relationships that we want. Sometimes we can feel discouraged, but I believe as we fine-tune our consciousness, really realizing what is for us to do, what is our job to do on our own consciousness, we're not here to solve other people's problems. We're not here to fix the world. We're not here to fix Washington. We're not here to fix the state. We're here to really not only fix ourselves, really, but really turn within and see where we can change and again, what we can let go that no longer serves us. And again, when we have this journey within ourselves, we take again a thousand small actions and we can still affirm our journey will be fun and joyful. 
As we go through this Lenten time, it's not about just giving up chocolates. It's not just about giving up chocolate milk. What it is, is letting go of ideas and thoughts and images that simply don't serve us anymore. And you get to decide what those thoughts and images are. Again, you ask, you seek, and you knock. That's the formula that we can use. We do believe that we can make it. And when you make something, it means we're forming something in consciousness. In many ways, our scripture is kind of like a, a form that you put jello in or a cake or a bun cake. The substance we pour into it will take the form of the shape. So whenever we read scripture, those are ideas or paths that we can use to achieve our greatest dreams. What's your dream, what is your dream really for 2024? What's your dream for Easter? When Easter is going to be here before you know it, what do you want to walk out of? What limitation do you really want to walk out that, that Sunday morning on Easter to be who you've come to be, to be transformed? And it's a self-transformation that we teach when we remember that we ask, we seek, and we knock. We take action. We just don't think about it in our head and go back to sleep. This is from a early uh, New Thought teacher, is Hiroto uh, uh, Dresser, and he says, the soul expands and grows in the light of the spirit. It knows no obstacles. It looks abroad upon life with a sense of dominion over all. It is free. It is joyful. It is free. How free are you this morning? How free, how joyfully free are you this morning? I think it's something we can take into prayer as we go forward this, this upcoming week. I want to say too is that when we are asking and seeking and knocking, we're taking action, I want to say that we don't need to dumb ourselves down. I think many times we dumb ourselves down thinking that that's going to help us get by. We're not here to dumb ourselves down. We're here to elevate ourselves. We're here to live in a higher self-consciousness. We're here to go into the super-consciousness. We're here to be the Christ, the divine image and likeness of our own life, which also means that we don't have to follow the crowd. It also means we don't have to be Tend we don't have the answers if you really do, just because you don't want other people to think this or that of you. See, we are not here to hide our skills. We're divine, and we have skills and talents and desires within us that only we can bring into manifestation. That's the reason, we, that's the reason why we have incarnated here right at this time in this space. We are unique, which means we're remarkable, which means that we have the capabilities to be extraordinary. So stop apologizing. Stop selling yourself short. That's for all of us. There's always places in our life where we have sold ourselves short. Let's, this, let this really be the Sunday in Lent that we say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to be extraordinary. I'm going to be who I have come to be. That's not for anyone else. They have their own journey, their own consciousness. This is for you speaking. And that's really what truth and metaphysics offers all of us. This is from a New Thought teacher, Deepak Chopra. Awakening is not changing who you are, but discarding who you are not. That's our teachings. That is our teachings. And this idea of awakening, because when we live in a third dimensional world, we're hip not hypnotized by what's going on around us. Kind of like on TV. You know, we just think this is going on and we get sucked into it because of all the drama and the sounds and the visual images. We're more than that. Let's knock. Let's seek. Let's ask and seek and knock at a different vibrational level. And you get to do that. We have the ability to go beyond our comfort zones. Please hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying doing something reckless. I'm saying go out of your comfort zones. So if you prayed for 30 minutes every day, maybe do 35 minutes. Maybe, maybe do a morning prayer time and an afternoon prayer time. You could decide the practice that you want. But I'm here to say, when you ever set time aside to ask and to seek and to knock, you really will find your answers. Again, knocking is knocking at the door. It's knowing, not only knocking at the door, but spirit will open that door. We're knocking at a door. We're not uh, knocking at a brick wall. We have a purpose to go through into higher higher understanding and another higher dimension. I encourage all of us to do something out of our soul's box today. And you know what I'm saying here. You have a normal life pattern. This is what you do. 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 Maybe this week you can do something different. 
Now you can tap into that soul self. You can have a, maybe a new desire bubble up or a old desire that you want to bring into manifestation. Why isn't it being manifested in your life? Take that into prayer. And again, with this formula, asking, seeking, and knocking, I guarantee you spirit will open up something within you in the direction that you want to go. I'd also invite you in my research, one of the things that was encouraged was invite people to do something that gives them butterflies in their stomach. And again, I'm not saying you get butterflies in your stomach to get Pepto-Bismol. I'm saying get butterflies because it's something a little bit different. You're a little bit on the edge. You're going to your growing green edges of life. That's what life's about. Especially in this Lenten season as we really begin the spring process. Is the world in the, our hemisphere becomes alive again with greens. That's what we are. And this is part of the seasons we go through. We live in cycles. And we should enjoy each cycle we are in consciousness. May this be the Sunday that we ask, we seek, and we knock. But let's know what we want. Let's know what we desire. This is from Unity Minister Sue Sicking. Do not miss a moment of life. Remember, life is to live. And our only assignment is to meet what lies before us this day. Strange as it may seem, the more we have to meet and do meet, the greater will be our uh, advancement and fulfillment. Again, metaphysical truth. See, if we want to advance, we want to have fulfilling lives where we feel grace. We feel that energy of grace and joy. We need to make the time. We need to be alive, which means we have to grow. Again, we're not, just not here to sit on a bench. There's nothing wrong with sitting on a bench. But we're here to expand. So again, my self-reflection uh, question for me this Sunday is, what am I asking for? What am I seeking in my life? And where can I knock to find that opportunity manifest from the invisible into this third dimensional world? That's what that formula offers us. I want to share with us also that we don't have to be real dramatic and tell everybody what we're going to do. You know, you can do that if you want. I encourage you to keep it quiet. Have it be between you and spirit. People will understand if something's happening. I think many times we dissipate our dreams and our desires because we're chat, 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 telling her we're going to do, 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 and then we do nothing. So maybe this is the Sunday we can maybe turn within and find that, that center within us that we really deserve what we desire, that we're going to ask for at this time, and we're going to seek it unconditionally, and we're going to knock at the doors that we know that will open for us that spirit leads us to. And who in this world doesn't really want to ask, seek, and knock? Again, it's a dynamic formula of truth. And you need all three components. You need all three components. If you just ask, but you don't continue to seek, and you for sure don't take it into action, the law of mind action is not going to bring it into your experience. I'd like to share a story with you, and this is about uh, a man named Tom, and he was with his mentor. On Tom's weekly walk with his mentor, uh, Dwayne, uh, he said he didn't want to work on developing himself anymore. Walking past a river, Tom said, every week you tell me to learn something or grow in a particular area. To be frank, I'm sick of it all and I don't want to change anymore. I think sometimes we can feel like that. We just feel it's too much. It's too much. Why can't I just stay exactly the way I am? See, that's a demic consciousness talking to us. Aren't I good enough? Isn't that good enough, the progress I've made already? The teacher, Dwayne, pointed, uh, pointed out uh, to a dead fish that was floating in the river. He said, tell me, Tom, what is that over there? It's a dead fish, but that has nothing to do with me. What's the dead fish doing? It's floating downstream with the current, but it has nothing to do with me. But the fish is dead. How, how can it be moving? Asked the mentor, ignoring his protege's frustration. The river is moving it, but that has nothing to do with me, he said, and he replied, really exasperated. We're going to come back to that story. This is from a famous yogi that came over in the early 1900s. This is Swami Vivekananda. A lot of fabulous truth, and he shares this. 
You have to grow from the inside out. None can teach you, none can make you spiritual. There is no other teacher but your own soul. That's truth. That's what we teach. We're not looking out for some outside deity. We're not looking for some outside approval from some outside force. Now, please hear me. God is omnipresent, which means we live in divine mind, but we always turn within to connect up with our soul because every soul has incarnated into this third dimensional plane for a purpose, for a reason. And when you ask and when you seek and when you knock, you knock and know what you're supposed to do. We are spiritual souls, which means we're living with our souls and it's an art, but it's an internal it's an internal process. And as the swamis from the East, even the mystics of the West say, we have to keep those fires stoked. So you stoke in your fire. How do you stoke your fire? You come to class, come to our classes. You watch my YouTube more than once. You read truth books. You seek, you seek, but first you have to ask and then seek, and then you gotta knock. You need to take it into action. And of course, it all unfolds differently for individuals. My question for myself and for you is, where are you in the process? Are you using the one, two, three process? Or are you missing one of the steps? And if you're missing one of the steps, I encourage you to really take into meditation and reflection, asking, seeking, and knocking. That's how we transform our life. That's self-transformation. That's how we change our consciousness. And this is from Unity Minister Charles Roth. The spiritual life is truly what all people are seeking, whether or not they are consciously aware of it. The inner self is seeking the spiritual life because man is a spiritual being. See, Charles Roth is telling us the truth. The question is, do you believe it? The question is, do you want to believe it? Or do you only want to believe it on Sunday? Or you only want to believe it when, you, when things happen the way you want them to? You only want to believe it when the family gets together and they don't argue with you? you th that's not the way it works. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. There's nothing wrong with that. Remember, Jesus Christ, the Jesus is the human element. Christ is the divine. So I'm Michael Christ. You're whatever your name is, Christ. You are both human and divine. And we need, to, we need to ask, we need to seek, and we need to knock at our own soul's door to see where we're going to go this day. And on Tuesday, we'll do a different, maybe a different way of approaching it. But we're always in movement. We're never stagnant. I will say the wind of change does happen sooner or later. So we need to change. See, in metaphysics, we choose when we're going to change. We're not a victim of circumstances. So this is happening out here. Who cares? We know what's going on. Who cares? Like Louise Hay would say, who cares? See, the problem is we care at a level. And again, when I'm saying caring, I'm not saying you don't know what's going on. I mean, if the road has construction, you're going to try to drive through it. That's stupid. That's not being smart. But you are, you're in the moment. You're not going to let that construction on the road or freeway to deter you of where you have to go. And that's the wind of change. And the wind can bring blessings, and it can also bring other challenges. But we're here to grow through our challenges when we ask and when we seek. And we really knock and know that that door is going to open. You're not knocking at the door hoping, hoping it'll open. You're knowing it's going to open for you. We need to decide. See, we need to evolve. See, we're not, we're not here just to get by. We're here to adapt, to change. We're here to be receptive to the spirit within us. So what is your soul asking for today? What is your soul seeking today? What is your soul willing to knock at? What doors are you willing to walk to? And again, you got to walk to the door. Sometimes you got to work through, it's a process. It's a one, two, three, you just don't get out of the car and get the door. It's a process. It's called growing and evolving in consciousness. This is from Ernest Holmes. This is Ernest Holmes' older brother, Fenwick Holmes. In the consciousness of a person is the knower, or that which within him knows. The knower is the self, the I am. This morning, I encourage you, when you use this formula of prayer, asking, seeking, and knocking, know that the, the voice that you need, the consciousness that you need to use, is the I am within you. That's the divinity within you. Let's listen, and let's move forward step by step in the direction we want to go. I want to say, too, that when you have faith, you're not pushing the river. I think many of us, we're pushing and pushing and pushing. We're not here to push. We're here to flow with. We're here to move in the direction 
are our greatest dreams. Maybe you have let some of your dreams fall to the wayside. Maybe this Lenten season, you can maybe pick up some of those dreams. Maybe they'll be a little bit configured differently. But I encourage you during this Lenten season, when you let go of things, which is great, but what are you willing to put your energy into? Are you willing to ask for blessings? Are you willing to seek those blessings? And are you willing to knock at the door where you know you will receive them? And now back to that story with that student. Uh, Duane uh, turned to the young man and said, life is like that river. It's changing and always moving. Some people refuse to change, but the reality is they are changing, but not in the way that they can control. If you choose to resist developing yourself, which sometimes we do, uh, we resist to develop ourselves, our skills will dissipate. Our skills will change. Our attitudes will change. And we will surely become, because of the world, negative and sour. You will become less useful to the world. We all want to, we all want to be useful in some way. We don't want to be dead weight. You may think that you're not changing, and that's what the ego wants us to think. We're just going to be at this plateau. We're not going to keep going on the path. But see, here's the difference. You have a choice. You can take positive actions now to control the change that is inevitably going to happen in your life in which you want to experience, or you can become like the world a victim of the current around you. See, being change, change happens in a very subtle way. But it's inevitable that it will impact your future, and I'm here to say, in a negative way. Remember, you can't choose not to change. You can't choose not to change. Change is inevitable. That's truth. We're here to grow and expand. So we talk about evolution of consciousness. You can choose to be a dead fish floating along or a live fish in control of its destiny. When you resist personal growth, you're becoming a dead fish. And that dead fish smells foul. That's the attitudes around us. No one wants to be around a sour person. You know what I'm talking about. Or you can determine to develop yourself and move forward. And you can say, I'm going to ask, I'm going to seek, and I'm going to knock. I'm going to knock at the door where I can have my path to my greatest good. We're not here to be a dead fish. We're not here just to float by. We're here to be so much more. This is from uh, religious science minister Donald Curtis. We are not just man, but also God in man. This is the key to the entire matter. The science of mind teaches that man is divine as well as human. So we say this, and I speak this, and you can read it in Lessons in Truth. You can read it in Christian Healing. You can read it in the Science of Mind textbook. You can read it in the Daily Word. But the real question is, what do you believe? What do you believe? And not just when things are going good. Your belief should not change whether, quote, things are going good or bad or they're indifferent. That's why we want to know what to ask for. We need to know what to seek. And again, we want to knock at a door that's going to open for us because we're realizing our potential within us. We're always connected to spirit. And we're also connected to this world. We're uh, connected biologically. Uh, we're connected chemically to this earth. And really the rest of this earth uh, universe atomically. We're not here by accident. We are made of this substance of this, this plane, this third dimensional plane. And there's nothing wrong with being in the third dimensional plane as long as we remember that we are not edemic consciousness living from that understanding, that we have the ability to show up differently with divine ideas. Jesus would say the kingdom of heaven consciousness. And when you have a kingdom of heaven consciousness, that means you ask, that means you seek, and that means you knock at your greatest hope and desires. Ask, seek, knock. Enlightenment means taking full responsibility for our lives and walking forward. Only you can answer that question. And this is from uh, Robert Schuller. The wages of negative thinking is the death of joy, hope, faith, and enthusiasm. We cause our own emotional death not God. See, most of us are blaming God. We're blaming some outside entity. We're blaming because we're born on the wrong side of the tracks. We're blaming because we didn't go to the college we want. We're blaming, 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 blaming. In a way, actually, academically, that's asking for negativity, that's seeking negativity, and that's knocking at negativity at that vibrational level. Remember, the universe is basically like a chalkboard. And you have the chalk, that's your consciousness. The, the, the chalkboard will not fight what you write on that chalkboard. 
You get to choose that. Let's start writing the dreams. Let's start writing the aspirations. Let's start writing answered prayer instead of frustration and anger. No matter how much you think you're justified, it keeps you stuck. We're not here to be sour. We're truly here to be the light of our own world. Again, and when you're not the light of your own world and you're letting this outside world control how you're feeling, what happens, you become very sour and you become drained. It drains our fuel of our soul. We create so much energy during the day, a 24 hour period. And if you're stuck or glued into or plugged into negativity, guess what? That's gonna be a challenge. I would encourage you don't watch more than an hour worth of nightly news. Maybe only 10 minutes is enough. I mean, I'm not saying you don't know what's going on again, but I'm saying is what happens when you watch it over and over and over, that energy goes into your subconscious mind and it's all about negativity. It's all about negativity. Let's this Lent let go of negativity. Let's ask and let's seek and let's knock at a door where we can find more joy. We can find more dreams, friendships and relationships that we really want to have and enjoy. And then when we do this, what happens is when you're seeking and when you're first asking and seeking and um, knocking, you have a new compassion that wells up within you, a compassion that's based on your authenticity, that you're a true student. Again, you're not here by chance. You're not some dice just thrown on the concrete. You could be if you want to, but we really are here to be more. Again, we're not here to be the dead fish floating down because not only is the fish dead, the fish has no control of its direction, but also it stinks. That's a sour attitude. Maybe this Lent we can let go of a sour attitude. And I know things can piss us off. I understand things can upset us. I understand that. Let's take a breath. Let's take a pause. And let's know that we can ask and seek and knock at a different vibrational level. And we can rise up in consciousness if we truly want to. And this is from Union Minister Winifred Wilkinson. Awaken God activity in your life and the result will be for good. Do your best with God's help and leave the other person free to do the same. That's truth. Remember, you are your own first responsibility. See, that's what we teach. See, an Adam consciousness of a victim, a duality is you're a victim. You're a martyr. You're a puppet. Puppets don't control their own behavior. May this be the sign that we control our behavior. Somebody's not pulling our strings. We're so much more. Again, we ask, we seek, and we knock. And I, I would say that we should seek happiness. And we should travel on that road of happiness where we can own it, knowing that we're working, we earn it. It's something that we really want to be about. So what do you want to experience in your life? You know, I can give you suggestions. I can encourage you to read a book. But here's the deal. You can have all these books on the shelf. But if you're not living what's in those books, they're not gonna mean anything. And we really deserve to have better. We need to stop selling it ourselves short. This is from Carl Jung. The privilege of a lifetime is to become who you really are. Who are you? Who are you? I can tell you who you are, you're the Christ. I know that, I'm the Christ too. The question is, are you willing, are you willing to believe it now, this Sunday? and take it to a higher dimension. It's not just knowing, kind of like owning a book. You can have a lot of cookbooks. That doesn't mean you're a good cook. You can have a lot of recipes. That doesn't mean you know how to cook. You, gotta, you have to ask, you have to seek, and you gotta knock. And you're not gonna be a good cookbook if you don't have the tools, like an oven, or bowls, or spatulas. Those are the tools, metaphysically, symbolically, that we give, denial, affirmation. That's what Lent's all about to let go of what is no longer serving us now. Didn't mean it didn't serve us in the past, but today can be different. Energy we know scientifically is created and can never be destroyed. Energy is always flowing. But again, that energy must be used and directed and it's a, an internal energy that our soul creates. Our emotive nature and our emotions really taint how our spiritual nature is gonna be. So again, what is your formula? I'm encouraging you to ask, to seek, and knock. And again, you have to knock because that's where you take form and action. Thoughts take form and action. Otherwise, they're just in your head. It's like those wonderful cake recipes that are still in the Betty Crocker cookbook. You don't open the book, you don't have any flour, you don't have any grease or whatever you're gonna put in the pan, then go nowhere, can't eat the pages. And I wouldn't recommend that because you're gonna get indigestion. Change is inevitable. 
We need to be the creator of our own realities. We need to manage it and we need to feel empowered. When we ask, when we seek, when we knock, we become empowered as a Christ within us. And in closing, I'd like to leave you some wisdom from the Kabbalah, which is one of the controlling instruments of Hebrew thought. And it says, it is forbidden to study the Kabbalah for any purpose other than spiritual elevation. Elevating, elevating. We're, we're here to come higher. We're not here to go down. We're here to go up. Are you willing to elevate your consciousness? Are you willing to step into a higher understanding of who you are? May this be the Sunday that you do. May this be the Sunday that you elevate to where your soul needs to be today. And I do know that this Lenten season, which we are in, will help you transform your life the way it's supposed to be for you. And when we get to the Easter service, when we get to that Easter time, we will spring forward and have the life that we choose. May this be the Sunday that we elevate ourselves. Maybe elevate ourselves in asking for higher truth. Maybe elevate ourselves in seeking, knowing that we can find that truth, and also elevate us so we can knock at the doors. We're not here to knock at walls. We're here to knock at doors that are going to open. And you know how they're going to open? Because you deserve it. And you're not going to play small. And we just say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift is this Sunday and imbue it with truth. You can go to unityway.com and get our physical address, or you can go to unityway.com and do an electronic donation. And I want to say thank you in joy. I want to say thank you in grace. I want to thank you for elevating your life. Because as you release this energy, because everything's God's substance, and we release it to the circulation of truth, you will be blessed because that's metaphysical law. If you please join me with our prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer for protection. When we have asked, when we are seeking, and when we knock at that door, we have protection. We live a balanced life. If you join me with our prayer, please. Uh, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. All is well. May this be the Sunday that you ask deeply. May this be the Sunday you seek deeply. May this be the Sunday that you knock hard enough that you know that door will open for you. And it will. We'll see you next Sunday and have a great week coming up. And just know that you deserve it. Just know that you deserve it. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.